Hello everyone! During this lecture will be presented food packaging. There are different kinds of food packaging and uh, what will be explained uh, during this lecture will be the concept of food packaging uh, including vacuum packaging, moderate vacuum packaging, active packaging, also edible coatings, modified atmosphere packaging, modified atmosphere storage, controlled atmosphere storage, hyperbaric storage, aseptic packaging, microstructures. Beside the modified atmosphere packaging, let's consider the modified atmosphere storage, which means that the produce is stored in an airtight storage room with a modified atmosphere. Furthermore, this atmosphere is created by the respiration process of the produce, where the oxygen level is decreased and carbon dioxide level is increased, and the total of the two gases being around 20%. As for the application of modified atmosphere storage, is used uh, in case of fruits and vegetables especially, only with chilled storage. As for the controlled atmosphere storage, that means that the produce is stored in airtight, chilled storage room, where is created a modified atmosphere and continuously is controlled and regulated. Controlled atmosphere storage can be maintained during transport in containers. The composition of the atmosphere in the storage room is kept constant such as the case of oxygen that is kept 3% and the carbon dioxide 3%, as this slow down the most quality degradating processes. And for the application of controlled atmosphere storage as the only hurdle, can we say that it is always used in combination with other hurdle factors, especially with chilling. And in the practice, controlled atmosphere storage is very applicable in case of fruits and vegetables, and especially for apples and pears. As for the hyperbaric storage, the produce is stored at chill temperatures under pressures of 10 to 100 millibar, and often with a constant circulation of fresh air at high relative humidity, which is from 80 to 100 percent. The storage life of many horticultural and floricultural products may be increased considerably as the oxygen available to the produce is much lower than normal. Hyperbaric storage can be maintained during transport, meaning in containers. The system is not used as widely as modified atmosphere or controlled atmosphere storage. As for the application of hyperbaric storage as the only hurdle, can be said that it is used in combination with other hurdles factors, especially with chilling. Let's now consider the aseptic packaging, which normally means that the foods after heat processing are transferred to sterile and hermetically sealed containers under aseptic conditions, so that no recontamination can take place. The principle is well known for the liquid products, for example in case of UHD milk, fruit juices, etc. In order to increase safety and stability, the clean room technology is intended to drastically reduce the number of microorganisms in the areas where food products are produced, slides, or packaged. Aseptic packaging in itself is normally a combination of hurdles such as heat processing and packaging, but for considering as uh, applicable as only hurdle, can be said that uh, it may be combined with other hurdle factors such as chilling. Let us now consider the microstructures. In certain foods, the microorganisms present are not evenly distributed. They grow being restricted 
to definite areas in the product. Let's now consider some cases. For example, in concentrated oil in water emulsion, the bacteria form small colonies. In water in oil emulsions, the bacterial growth is confined to the water droplets, which may lose their integrity due to coalescence. In fermented sausages or cheese, the bacterial growth is immobilized in little cavities or nests. The preservation of water in oil foods, such as butter, margarines and low-fat spreads, depends mainly on their microstructures. As long as they are prepared under condition of stringent hygiene, most of the aqueous phase droplets in this product will be free of microorganisms. Furthermore, access of microorganisms to the sterile droplets will be prevented by the presence of the surrounding continuous lipid phase. And the stability of such products during extended storage then depends on the degree of hygiene during production, the formation and maintenance of a stable droplet structures, distribution of droplet sizes, and the presence of preservatives. I want to thank you very much for your attention for following the food packaging lecture.